Great. Uh, hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Heart to Heart with Maxwell Star. I just want to talk to everybody about uh, how my internet sucks. And I had to reboot my router just before I, uh, I I went live here tonight. So your regularly scheduled uh, Beer Analysis 101 will be picking up here in a moment. And uh, yeah, and that moment is now. So hey, welcome back to Maxwell Star and uh, Beer Analysis 101. Uh, we've actually got one of the best beers that we've uh, ever looked at on this channel. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks to Greg, which is he's not drinking the beer we're drinking tonight, but he did send it to me. This is from Bellwoods. Bring out your dead 2018 bottling, which is a imperial stout aged in cognac barrels for I believe six months. Uh, I believe it's six months. I don't think they twelve months. Do. It's a year. Holy frack! Oh, I'm gonna that. update my description. Anyway, um, uh, first of all, I want to apologize for being late tonight, but uh, that's not exactly a big surprise to anybody in this panel. Speaking of the panel, let's get down to the someone who we haven't seen in a while. Hey, Joe, how are you doing tonight? Mr. Joe of the Beer Patrol. Pretty good. I was here a couple weeks ago, though, but I appreciate you remembering. It's still, it's still a while to me. It was like, like yes, last week was a while ago. I do appreciate you inviting me back, though. Thank you. You're always invited, man, as long as you can get the beer. Anyway, uh, Mr. Ash Sexton, how are you doing tonight? Sexton Brewing Co. I am doing absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Great. Perfect. All right. Uh, hey there, uh, Chris of Off the Tenth. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thank you for having me, Macwell. I appreciate Macwell. being on the uh, on the show today. I'm excited to try this beer that I've never had. Right on. Spoiler Thanks alert. Here. Never had it. You've never had it. Well, you could have told us that later, but sure. What? Anyway, uh, and of course, I know somebody who definitely has had this beer before. Uh, it's probably had several and probably still has several of them on hand, along with all the shoes in the closet. Mr. Greg, how are you doing tonight? Well, let's not forget my exotic collection of Etobicoke condos and sports cars. <laughs> you know it. And $1,800 jackets. Right. I got my collection of those, too. So this is... Uh, this is the cheapest thing I possibly own. They're only fifteen dollars a bottle, so I bought two hundred. Actually, I think the cheapest thing you own is that can of Budweiser you're drinking while we're getting started. <laughs> yes, let's play some football. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that tie is cheaper. Look, this is how I feel. You know, this is the classy beer in the room. This is the non-classy beer. Every this classy me, lady needs a slut to make her look better. Go without his uniform. All right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Let's get into the beer history for Bellwoods. And it's the first time we're ever looking at Bellwoods on this uh, on Beer Analysis 101. So I'm excited. Bellwoods traces its origin to 2012 with uh, former Amsterdam brewing employees Mike Clark and Luke Pessel uh, decided to set up shop together, both residing in the little Portugal neighborhood of Toronto's west side and uh, sensing a market for a brewery taking creative styles of beer, Mike and Luke built their brewery in the former garage most recently used for a gallery and event space at 124 Oslington Avenue near Toronto's famous Trinity Bellwoods Park. Bell was officially opened to the public on April 11, 2012, with five beers on tap, which were their Common Pale Ale, their Farmhouse Saison, Toil and Trouble Double, Witch Shark Imperial IPA and Cuvée de Grandma's, uh, boy, Cuvée de Grandma, that's a Cuvée, Cuvée. Um, Bellwoods followed this up with selling bottles in June 2012. Their popularity grew from there, quickly becoming a craft beer hotspot in Toronto and known as one of the best breweries in Ontario, including winning Rate Beer's Top Ontario Brewery of the Year, a gold at the Canadian Brewing Awards for their Lost River Baltic Porter, and being named Stephen Beaumont's 2012 Ontario Brewery of the Year Award uh, for, for his, uh, his beer vlog in their very first year of operation. Um, in April 2013, Bellwoods decided to celebrate their first anniversary in style, releasing a 10% ABV Imperial Stout aged for three months in cognac barrels. A year later, uh, Bellwoods... Uh, that would, that would be Bring Out Your Dead that, we, that they released uh, for their first anniversary. Uh, a year later, Bellwoods followed this up with their now famous Motley Crew for their second anniversary, a sour uh, blend of triple aged in red wine barrels and quad aged in, in port barrels. Both of these beers went on to become hotly demanded annual releases with Bring Out Your Dead released in the fall and Motley Crew in the spring. 
Uh, Bellwoods originally announced plans to expand in 2014 with the acquisition of the former Hamilton Gear and Machine Building at uh, 950 DuPont Street. However, uh, securing the new location faced delays. In March 2016, Bellwoods announced the third location at 20 Hafis Road, uh, which would la later be their uh, production brewery, uh, along with a bottle shop and tasting room. The 20 Hafis Road location opened its doors on December 17, 2016. I had a chance to visit there in 2017. Bellwoods, uh, by 2016, uh, Bellwoods was brewing 60 different beers a year. Bellwoods has now become known for its classics such as Witch Shark Imperial IPA, Milk Shark Series of uh, Milkshake IPAs, Roman Candle IPA, the Jelly King Series of Dry Hop Sours, Jutsu Pale Ale, Wizard Wolf Pale Ale, Skeleton Key, which is a spiced Imperial Stout aged in rum barrels, Three Minutes to Midnight, another annual Imperial Stout, this time aged with cherries. Uh, Farmageddon, barrel-aged wild ale. Uh, the Rune series of double dry hopped uh, IPAs made with lupulin power, powder. And uh, literally hordes more. There's tons of shit. Anyway, so for the one, the 2018 bottling of uh, Bring Out Your Dead is an 11.4% ABV American Imperial Stout. Brewed for 12 months in, or aged for 12 months in cognac barrels. Originally aged for three months in cognac barrels, every edition since 2014 has now aged for 12 months, adding much more barrel care to the beer. Uh, all right, so let's uh, get down to our beer histories, starting with Mr. Average Joe himself. Well, thank you, Nick. Before I get into my history, though, I want to give a heartfelt thanks to Mr. Greg Bylog for not only hooking us all up with this beer, but for being the consummate professional each and every week here on Beer Analysis 101. And to be honest with you, you know, Greg takes his time each and every Wednesday night to grace us with his presence. He is the, I'd say the main member outside of Nick, see what I did there, that uh, shows up every week. And I feel he's underappreciated and undervalued and he's just kind of taken for granted. So I know Nick will never thank you, Greg, but from the bottom of my heart, I thank you and maybe someday Maybe someday I will wear a uniform on my channel. Now, my history of the beer. Uh, I've had this beer plenty of times before. I've had every single vintage. And I want to say my or the original 2013 is still my favorite to date, which is funny because you just mentioned that it was only aged for three months in the cognac barrels, which kind of blows me away because I thought that was the most cohesive, balanced, tasty vintage period of this beer. I think, uh, I think everybody... And Greg, when he gets to go through his history, which is way more extensive than any other person on the panel, right? The 2014 was always, uh, a, or people thought it was a letdown. They were like, I love the 2013. But I think the 2015 I thoroughly enjoyed, and I really liked the 2017. And uh, we'll see what the 2018 has the offer here. But um, I've liked every vintage to varying degrees. 2013 is still my favorite to date. That's all I got. Right on, Mr. Joe. And yeah, did you say it was the first one, the 2013, that you liked the best? Yeah, yeah, that was definitely the best. Uh, and I think if you ask most people who've had the 2013 and any other vintages, they probably agree. Hmm. Um, yeah, because I, I remember having it, I think, well, I'm gonna, I'll get into my history in a bit. But uh, yeah, that from what I was reading, it was the first batch was in, in three months. Now, that could also mean first fill versus subsequent fill of the barrel. I don't know. Who knows? All right, uh, Mr. Ash Sexton. Uh, I've actually never had uh, Bring Out Your Dead before. Um, <laughs> my experience with Bellwoods is somewhat limited. Uh, I've only had three beers from Bellwoods before, two of which were from the uh, bottle show that we had last year on the 10th. And then the other one came courtesy of an Instagram contest I won. It was one of their Milk Shark uh, beers. And uh, yeah, other than that... Uh, yeah, not, not a whole lot of experience with the brewery or with this beer whatsoever. Nice. So not a lot of experience with the brewery itself? No. No, I don't go down to Toronto. Huh. I'm surprised. I know you're big in the craft beer. I would have thought you'd have more uh, stuff from them. I hate that city, man. I can't stand traveling to Toronto. Yeah. All right. Fine. Hey, Torontonians don't like Welland much either. You're not you, you're not a Torontonian, man. <laughs> You live in Etobicoke. It's Toronto. In a condo. 
<laughs> all, right, all right, Chris, what's your history with Bellwoods and this beer, if any? All right. First of all, I as well would like to thank Greg for signing this one out in our direction. And Ashley went and picked them up, which I appreciate that too, Ashley. Really, uh, you know, Greg is 100% professional each and every time. And Agnes is definitely a lucky woman to have Greg beside her all the time. I feel bad for you now, Agnes. Sorry. But anyway, uh, my history on this beer, I've never had it. Um, Fuck, I should have checked my untapped to see what other stuff I've ever had from Bellwoods. I probably actually all the stuff that we did on the bottle share, I pretty much did not untap because I was stupid and I didn't do it. But anyway, um, other than that, no, I haven't had this before. And I'm actually looking forward to telling you guys how much I hate it. No, I'm just kidding. We'll see you in a minute. All right. On. All right. And uh, last but certainly not least, obviously tonight, not tonight, because he's the man of the hour, man of the uh, half hour anyway, uh, who is been generous enough to send him send out all these bottles uh, of uh, Bellwoods to us. Mr. Greg, how are you? What's your history with Bellwoods or rather this beer? Consider you probably got an extensive history with Bellwoods. Yeah, I was just double checking my untapped. Uh, Bellwoods was my second most untapped brewery I have. 267 check-ins for Bellwoods. Those Holy are not, crap. They're not uniques, but those are how many times I've had. I've checked in various Bellwoods products. Yes, I, I do like them, even though I have my own issues with them, but we'll go into that another time. Um, I've had this beer three times before, at least according to Untap, maybe more. I don't know. Um, yeah, I've had every vintage of Bring Out Your Dead. I agree with Joe's assessment that the 2013 was the best vintage up uh, this uh but yeah the uh bring out your dead has been kind of an inconsistent beer it's 2013 came out strong out of the gates i think they didn't quite understand what made the first one so good with the 2014 especially then they kind of 2015 they skipped seven they kept they skipped 16 it wasn't the 2016 then they had a 17 and 18, and they slowly but surely kind of started to figure out what made 2013 so good again. Um, I'm just sort of rambling on while I'm just finishing off this Budweiser before I actually get into a good beer. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I've had this beer three times before. I highly recommend you have it if you can get it. And thank you for all the kind words. Joe, I feel bad that I'm still going to harass you about a uniform, but it just ain't going to stop. I just realized I didn't thank you, Greg. My apologies. Fair enough. And I, I would also, I would like to thank Ashley and Chris for meeting up with me and exchanging beers, but mostly Ashley because he got it. Um, but I just want to clarify that I did pay for the beer. So, you know, I'm, I guess you picked it up, Greg, but I paid for it. Greg, I paid for it. I paid for it as well. I, just I, paid, want, I paid for it too. I Greg want, wasn't that generous. Yeah, I just want to. Cheap clarify. motherfucker. Out of charity. So everyone did pay me for the beer. So quite frankly, thank you guys for paying me because I was able to then afford to eat. And I appreciate that because I spend all my money on condos. That's that's what we do for you. That's what we do for you. Spending your money right? on jackets, it costs thirteen hundred dollars. Uh first of all, it's eighteen hundred dollars. Eighteen hundred, whatever. I didn't buy it, I just tried it on in the store. But okay, but what's the ones you have at home? You're okay. You you're it's not gonna watch us. They're not $1,800, I'll tell you that. All right. Anyway. Um, Hold on a second, Nick. Wasn't there a clip that you were supposed to show of Redbeard? That's what I was about to do. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for reminding me. All right. So we do have a virtual uh, virtual beard uh, this evening. I'm going to Ooh. turn this away here. I'm probably going to still get the reflection of my monitor. But uh, yes, I know how to operate this thing to play. What be going down, people of the Beer 101? Thank you so much for having me, Macwell. It's always a pleasure to be here. And a bunch of thanks to Greg for sending me this particular bottle of beer, even though it took a little while and stuff and things. I'm really looking forward to drinking it kind of almost with you guys. Gross! What? It's not like he picked his nose or anything. He looks, I just he want, weird. He looks weird without makeup on. <laughs> I just want to clarify <laughs> that Redbeard also paid for his bottle. Oh, yes. Like yeah. I said, 
guys did me a favor. I, I'm very happy I was able to afford Taco Bell. Shitty. All right, so let's go back to my history with Bell Woods. Ooh. I don't I'm trying to remember the first time I ever had a Bellwood spear. I think it might actually have been uh Witch Shark uh looking at my YouTube channel. I might have had one before that, but uh ah, crap. Shut up. Okay, I hit the wrong tab, of course. I'm trying to bring up my list of uh beer reviews that I've done. I know that I've done reviews of Witch Shark, Skeleton Key, Roman Candle. Roman Candle was probably the first one I ever had from Bellwoods, and I remember um, people talking about up about uh, Bellwoods back in 2013 about them being this amazing craft brewery uh, that's like hit knocking things out of the park and getting a beer from Bellwoods was like the hot new commodity in the craft beer world because just how well made they were at the time. Now I've heard that, you know mixed results about them maybe kind of like dulling a little bit down since they expanded a bit, but of course you hear that about every brewery that expands. But I've had a lot, uh, several different beers from them over the years. Um, I have had uh, Bring Out Your Dead 2014, but I remember everybody telling me about uh, how it, it dropped off, how 2013 was so much better uh, than the 20, 2014. And it, even though, yeah, um, 2014 was actually aged in barrels for 20, 12 months as opposed to three months, which is kind of strange. But uh, yeah. Um, I'm excited to get into this one for sure. All right. So uh, as, far, as far as comments go, uh, since we have our, our main comment reader with us tonight, do you want to give it a whirl, Joe? No, I'm good. You're good? No, I'll do it. Can I just break in for one second? I believe the reason why 2014 was a disappointment, so I've heard, is they reused the barrels from 2013. Okay, which, that would make sense. And, and even though they, they aged them for 12 months, though, right? Is that the first year they started doing that, you said, in the history? Yeah, that's the... Uh, so they thought maybe because they were reasoning the barrels, they needed to go you know four times as long, but maybe it didn't work out like they planned. Could well be possible. And just to be clear, 2014 is still a delicious beer. It's just when you're going from the 2013 to the 14, you can, the drop off was was quite noticeable. Well, as you can imagine, it was very uh, very woody, very tannic. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of oak tannins for sure. All right, we got Redbeard says watching while I work. This was before the, sh the show started, and then. Chris talked about how you're probably pooping. Eric Gilbert said there must be a great video on a certain website. <laughs> and then uh, we got Craig from Kent Beer Review says, hey, brothers. What's up, Craig? Bro, dude. Yeah, okay. Redbeard says, cheers. Hey, Redbeard. Fantastic. Lee says, someone on here has the wrong beer. We've jumped the shark into Terrio territory. I don't know what he's talking about. Talking about Craig's fine champagne a la Budweiser. Yeah, that was probably a better beer. Ring I Parade says, uh, I can't get bearing out your dead in Maine. I had a 1050 all lined up. But I just got back from the store with a Cigar City Bambarana, 12.12% ABV Imperial Stout, aged in two different barrels, bourbon and brandy, which I've seen nice. some reviews, and that beer sounds amazing, and I'm pretty sure it's showing up in Western New York, so I'm all over it. I'm all over it. Maybe, maybe a future beer analysis 101, but I'm not, I'm not as kind as Craig. All right. And that's kind of great. Um, Eric Gilbert then says, cheers. Um, Ashley, for some reason, had his caps lock on and said, good evening, viewers, basically screaming at them, and then said, whoa, caps. So, Ashley, come on now. And then Lee says, it seems like you had another glorious day selling shoes under a tarp in a polar vortex weather, Ash. He's actually not that far from the truth. No, it's, yeah, that's pretty it's, it's pretty much bang on. There you go. Hundred percent, hundred percent correct. Confirmed. Lee then says, "Greg looks highly, uh, highly professional, unlike Joe." Well, thank you, Lee. I, I agree. I agree. Um, Redbeard then says, "Where the hell was my intro clip?" And that was before you actually did the intro clip for him. Yeah, that, that's when I played the intro clip because he's last because he didn't show up tonight. That's right. And I would like to end this with saying, uh, "Shut up, Redbeard." Also, Ashley. Um, says laughing my ass off and most certainly did lisa he already answered it but he answered it again so i appreciate that uh eric then says geez the ass licking I believe he's talking about us all tickling the balls of bring out your debt which is it's what i mean yeah it deserves it and then lee says is greg fucking rick flair all of a sudden spending money he doesn't have 
Listen, you spend the credit card, they take the money. That's the end of the transaction. I, I don't see what the problem is. That's true. That's true. And we'll finish the current comments with Redbeard saying, you played my intro clip when the history clip was supposed to be played. LOL. Shut up, Redbeard. No, he's right. Hang on a second. I'll play a Shut second clip. There. There's a second clip so you can stop fucking whining. Next time record in one piece. I've actually had this particular beer uh, about three times now, I think. Once at the actual brewery, once at Greg's house, and then once on my own. So I guess it'd be four times at this point. And uh, yeah, it, it's never disappointed in the least. This is some absolutely phenomenal beer. And uh, yeah, Bellwoods in general, I have had a lot of their stuff, but anything that I have had has been pretty damn tasty. And I want to give another big shout out to Greg for kind of pointing me in their direction because they make really, really tasty beer. And Agnes, you don't need to console Greg. Right. I just, I just want to make a point of be, of saying that uh, Redbeard was literally about a kilometer away from Bellwoods and was not planning to go when they had Bring Her Dead. And I'm sorry, Nick, if this is not politically correct, but I told Redbeard that if he doesn't go and pick up Bring Her Dead, that he is a complete fucking retard. And apparently, that really got him to do it because he's like, I don't want to be a retard, so he went and got <laughs> dead. What? And he drank the bring head before the beer. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. We're yeah, gonna, yeah this is all over now. Thanks. Most well, professional episode ever. Sure. Okay. You well, to just take off that tag, right? The other kind of words. I, I will say this one thing about Redbeard, though. For somebody who has reviewed, how many of these done? Like a thousand different reviews, like the thousand days of daily vlogs and everything, right? For him to be unaware of Bellwoods when he lives in the province of Ontario, what is happening? Like, what is happening? How do you not know about them? I don't understand what's happening. Does yeah, anybody, you, anybody want to clue me in here? Because that's yeah, even, just even I knew about Bellwoods six, six years ago. That'd be like Greg <laughs> being like, I don't know about Great Lakes. Oh my God, they're like across the street. What happened? Like, come on. Like, something about cool beer. I know Bellwoods, you know, isn't like the best brewery ever or anything. Clearly, all the breweries in North Bay, all two of them are the best, but, you know, come on now. Well, they're the 10 out of 10. All three beer. Them. This beer gets knocked out. <laughs> Both. All right, all right. So, uh, is that all for comments? I think we're good for now. Yeah, all yeah, right. So let's, hope let's, so, let's go to, let's pan over to, yeah, Redbeard says, thanks, man. You're welcome. Uh, let's pan over to, and it's totally my fault. I played your intro at the wrong time. All right. So let's go back over to the, uh, to the, our final thoughts, go over to Joe and say, what is your opinions of this beer? Well, in my opinion, without the trademark, I would say that, uh, this is delicious vintage of bring out your dead. Um, probably the best I've had since 2013. Although I do remember it was either 16 or 17. I really enjoyed it. I forget at this point, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the barrel presence, I, I think, is pretty big in this one, but it's not super boozy on the palate. Like, I feel like a chest warming and whatnot, but on the palate, it's not astringent. It's not, dare I say, hot. Uh, a lot of dark fruits, a lot of dark chocolate. Yeah, it's just fucking delicious. For an 11.4% beer, it is extremely smooth, very cohesive, super balanced, and I'm going to have no problem drinking the rest of it and enjoying every second of it. So once again, thank you, Greg. I do appreciate it, even though I paid for it. Also, um... I'd go as far as far as ratings go. That's an inside joke in case ever, anyone shows up and it's like, whoa, we're fucking just settle down. Also, um, stylistically, we're just going with barrel. We're not going specifically with a cognac barrel age, right? Just a barrel aged imperial stout. Is that what we're doing, Nick? Yeah, just stylistically say barrel aged stout. It's pretty uh, much what it is. Because yeah. I mean, when you say barrel aged something, it's what what like the barrels kind of ball the whole thing into one category. Anyway. Go ahead. Uh, Joe, is that glass actually in front of you? Because it totally looks like it's green screened. Thank you. <laughs> Fake beer. That is awesome. Yes, it is. Like, hang on. Let me. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not. Wait, well, you know, it's floating around on my green screen. Oh, there it is. All right. Um, but, uh, anyway, stylistically, I'd go 9.5. Uh, it's not the best within a barrel aged Imperial Stout, but it's fucking close. Me, do, 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 can we do point two? Can we do 9.75? Is that allowed? Forgot how it works exactly. Yeah, sure. You know, because right. I'm never here, Nick. Apparently, uh, we'll go to 9.75 for style and 9.5 for personal enjoyment. It's absolutely delicious. 
it's deserving of all the hype it's always gotten, even though, like like Greg says, the vintages are different. I mean, I don't think any of their vintages have ever been under a nine for me. Honestly, they're all delicious, uh, just to varying degrees. And this one is right up there, still underneath the 2013, which I think is basically perfect, but delicious in its own right. So 9.75 style, 9.5 personal. Nice. All righty, Mr. Uh, Ash. Uh, okay. Uh, you may want to throw my scores out. I only say that just because I think something went awry with my bottle. Um, this isn't drinking to me like an Imperial Stout should. Um, the moment I tasted it, uh, like first off, the aroma is really nice. I, I'm, I'm picking up some vanilla off the aroma, but I'm getting a lot of like really harsh alcohol on the nose. Um, my bottle's been out as long as probably everyone else's. Uh, well, certainly Joe's wine's been out probably for just over an hour now. So it's warmed up a touch. I'm getting a, a huge punch of alcohol in the nose, uh, but uh, also, you know, just a little bit of vanilla is coming through. Um, the sip is straight soy sauce and umami. I'm getting like a really harsh, like, like just an, an umami savory flavor off it. I'm not getting anything that is rich. I'm not getting anything that's velvety or smooth. It's very, it drinks very thin for me. So I honestly think that my bottle went a little screwy because an 11.4% Imperial Stout should be drinking pretty high, like, uh, like <laughs> very full bodied. It should be velvety. It should be thick. It should be coating the palate. This is drinking like a 5% adjunct lager. Like it's so thin. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I could even score it to be completely honest. Cause I, I, I don't think it'd be fair to the scores, but yeah, sorry. You, you must okay. score it. Get a score. Um, so for an infected bottle of beer, which is what I'm going to in <laughs> for an infected barrel aged Imperial stout. Uh, if, if infected was a category, I I'll give it a six and a half for personal wow. enjoyment. I'm going to give it a six. I, I, I honestly, I don't know what else to say, but there, there's something definitely wrong with my bottle. Uh, having never tried, had this beer before, I know that this is not how it's supposed to taste. Hmm. It can't be. I just want to point out he paid for his bottle. He paid for I, I, I paid for my bottle. Yeah. You know what? When it comes to the bottle share, hey, I'm going to bring another bottle of this and you and I are going to split it. And we will, I'll be curious to know if another bottle changes your mind or maybe that's just your taste. I don't know. Or if it is actually the bottle. Hmm. But I want you to try it because you're, it sounds to me like maybe your bottle's not so good. Yeah. I don't think it is. I mean, that's soy sauce and umami. Like, I, I'm not even getting even a bit of a hint of that. And that's usually quite nope. evident. Like, I've yeah. had a couple of beers that have been aged too long. And it's just like opening up a bottle of soy sauce and just smelling it. And then you're perceiving that you're starting to drink it, which no one just straight up drinks soy sauce, I don't think. But, yeah, it's yep. gross. Nope. Yeah. And and this wasn't improperly handled. Like, you know, I took care of the beer. It wasn't uh, stored above my my stove. Like, someone else's exploding bottle of beer. Was it was stored in your trunk on a hot summer day? I've been sleeping on it actually. It's been underneath my mattress for the last two months. Did you so. did you did you pull a Sith and put it right next to your furnace for seven years? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. So yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry if you got a bad bottle because that sucks. And you paid for it. Makes it even yeah. worse. Wasn't yeah. even cheap either. Return. How much were these? Like fifteen We're bucks in the glass. Uh, on the on the plus side, if if it is infected, that means it most likely did undergo a secondary fermentation, which means that the alcohol percentage has been bumped up a touch. Yeah. Cheers. At least you're gonna feel good. That's a positive. Yeah. Bump up that score. Seven point five and seven. Now he says. Yeah. All right, I'm changing it. Five. Six. You want to keep it in sixes? You must. Uh, yeah, it's been said. All right. Okay, so moving along to Mr. Chris. So say the shepherd, so say the flock. I don't know why I went there. Um, yeah. This I was just checking my untap. My other Bellwoods beer that I did on tap was the Jelly King, and I really enjoyed that one. Um, anyway, this beer is not infected. This is doing everything that I 
was expecting it to do, including a little bit of the alcohol burn, but it's going away. It's dissipating as I drink this beer. Um, it's sticky. It's full body for me. Um, you know what? I'm really enjoying this beer and I'm glad that, uh, that I got a chance to try it. Um, what else to say on this one? Smell. It's all there. Everything. You got the dark fruit. You got the raisin fruit, uh, raisin fruit, raisin smell on it as well. Other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty fucking good. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, so my scores for my own opinion, trademark, I am going to, uh, for style, it's up there. It's, it, it is what it's supposed to be and it's doing it very well. So with the style, I'm giving this a 9.25 out of 10. And for my personal enjoyment, it's getting a nine out of 10 for me. So, uh, yeah, it's a good one. I like it. I can't wait to try some more stuff from Bellwoods. That's for sure. So, was that nines? 9.25 and nine. 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 Nine, nine, nine. Did not see that coming. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. So, moving along to Mr. Pooh's probably going to give it a 10 out of 10. Anyway. Yeah, if you just hear from my score, it's a ten. It's a ten on style, ten on personal enjoyment. Throw that in there. Now I'm going to talk. You can go to the bathroom if you don't want to hear me talk, because that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, first of all, Ashley, I mean, I'm glad Joe liked his. I'm glad Chris liked his. Fine. I'm sorry that yours wasn't. I'm going to definitely give you the opportunity to try it again because I want. I want to know if you actually, if it's just the way you feel about the beer, or if it was your bottle. So I will bring another one to the bottle share for you to try. And we can just figure out where things are from there. Because I am legitimately curious. Because, you know, maybe, maybe just Joe like the beer. I don't know. Um, so I, I'm just going to kind of go over a quick vintage. So I think I'm the only one here that's actually had every single vintage. I don't know if Joe has or not. Joe's probably had. Have you had every single one? Okay. So I'm going to go with everyone. Joe can disagree with and That's fine. 2013. My memory of it, I only ever had one bottle of it, was the beer was absolutely perfect it was a perfect stout with barrel flavor and it was so velvety smooth it just went through down your throat like you could drink it almost like a five percent beer that just got you completely fucked up but it was just so smooth so delicious no alcohol burn this was a time where i didn't like and i didn't like stouts at all so for me to be able to drink it so nicely and so smoothly like my biggest regret is i only ever bought one bottle of it and by the time i actually tried it it was sold out and i couldn't buy more i wish i could have bought a thousand bottles of it if you know if, if i had the etobicoke condo money back then uh 2014 as was already mentioned was they really the tannins were up and i suspect what i think joe already said is hey let's just age it four times and it'll be just as good didn't quite work because they used old barrels and yeah it was very woody very very oaky kind of eh. 2015 seemed like they got things back together but from what i remember um, and I still have one 2015 left. And from what I remember of that is it's sort of, it's, it was, that one was a little bit watery. It was kind of disconnected. Like I said, you got the stout, you got the barrel, but it was kind of like a lot of water. I mean, I don't know why, cause that was the highest alcohol one. That was 13% alcohol, which is higher than any other vintage they've created, but it is what it is. Now the 17 is actually really interesting because the 17 was um that was incredibly hot when it was fresh alcohol burn all the way down the throat and that was so disappointing when it first came out especially since i bought like 12 bottles of it which is expensive um but that beer's actually come a long way and last one i had was red beer almost almost where the 2018 one is it has really come together everything's the alcohol burn is gone everything's come together but then there's the 2018 and this is where my 10 out of 10 comes from. And this is where it matches the 2013. I'm not going to say it's better. I'm not going to say it's worse because I don't remember the 2013 enough to really be able to tell you that what this has that the 2013 had and that no other vintage has had is the velvety mouthfeel. And I know that's a stupid word because who the hell he drinks velvet? Nobody does, but I know it's just a term. The way this goes down your throat, it's like thick, but it's smooth at the same time. You got all the flavors. The flavors are there, but the flavors were there in 2017 as well. That is why, to me, this is just a 10 out of 10 beer. That just, it is just every aspect of drinking this beer is just absolutely perfect. Is it the best beer I've ever had? I mean, it might be. I, I have a tendency to gravitate towards 
uh, beers that are coffee and pepper lately. That seems to be a, just a, a combination I love. But um, man, and as far as a barrel aged beer, cognac or otherwise, like this is just absolutely fantastic. And I like if I if uh, I, this is definitely my top five beers of all time. Would it be my favorite? I don't know. That would be a tough choice. I'd have to really sit down and actually drink a bunch of beers at the same time. But I, I, I know I'm biased because I'm in Toronto. It's my city. Fuck you. Etobicoke is part of Toronto. But uh, I love this beer. And lucky for me, I've got like nine more bottles left of it. So I, I'm going to be enjoying this beer for a lot longer still. And I've still got a bunch of 2017 and 16. So there'll be more comparisons for those of you that want to ignore me. You cannot watch my videos. Hashtag proper glassware. Hashtag proper glassware. Bring out your dead. I think Joe has one too. Wow. I just want to point out to, to Joe, not that I want to toot my own horn, but I originally got Joe a glass that was flawed and part of the crow was missing. And I went back to Bellwoods and swapped it because I'm like, I will not get Joe a half crow. I will get Joe the full crow or nothing less. And this man goes the extra mile. Also, I paid for it. Yes, you did pay for it. And that Actually, I don't, I don't know if I did. But I'm going to say I did. Definitely paid for that glass was like 15 bucks. Or it's worth it. This is the okay. nicest. This, this is a great glass. Great glass. I will also say on Bellwood's part, they gave me absolutely no problem. They, they exchanged them no questions asked. So good on you, Bellwood's. I just want to reiterate one more time how much that, how much I thank Greg and I appreciate Greg hooking us all up because uh, people don't realize that's, it's really cool. Greg not only went and got this beer at the brewery, he was nice enough to ship it out to people like Carrie. Like Nick, I joke that, you know, we paid for it, whatever, but, you know, fucking Greg went the extra mile, hooked everyone up so we could do something like this. So I, I do appreciate it, Greg. Yeah, I agree. Um, you didn't have to, you didn't have to go this far. And I think really it speaks about the, your passion of, for this beer that you wanted us to do it so bad on for beer analysis so badly. You actually went to the extra mile and sent it to us, even though we paid for it uh, we, and it didn't really cost you anything. Uh, but you were still, you did all the footwork and that's, that's totally on you. Except for Ashley, he had to go pick it up, but then he also got an infected bottle and he also paid for it. So aside from that, Ashley probably is the one that got gypped in the situation, but you it's know, okay. You know, the irony, the, the whole irony of that whole aspect of Ashley had all three with him mm -hmm. and we just picked bottles <laughs> and yeah. he was the lucky one to get the infected one. Well, that's crazy. Yeah. Lucky indeed. Very lucky. You're super lucky, Ashley. No doubt. Like well, I still drink it. Well, like that's, still the, drink it. that's the one thing with Greg saying it, and I, I kind of agree with Greg. Um, a lot of times I would say in this situation, like maybe it just is Ashley's palate, knowing that everybody's palate maybe. is different. But at the same time, like I've had, like I said, infected beers, and I could probably tell you if this was infected to the degree you're talking about, like straight soy sauce and umami and just the thinness and stuff and like the harshness of the alcohol – Chris mentioned the alcohol, uh, you know, some slight alcohol burn that he kind of adjusted to as he continued to drink it. But like, if this was harsh, I think all of us would be like, wow, like this is drinking like a 15, 20% beer. And yeah. none of us have really mentioned that. And somebody yeah. like Chris, who has a hashtag teen palette at this point, maybe yeah. close to an adult. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Almost he, is, he is more sensitive to, than any of us to the, to the booziness of big beers, even though probably not as much anymore. And the fact that you're talking about harshness, I know, Ashley, you, you've drank big beers and improved big beers and stuff. It's just like, yeah, it has to be infected. I don't think it's your palate. But I would be curious to see if Greg does bring a beer or it does bring the eight, 2018 vintage to the bottle share and you drink it again if you have the same opinion. Maybe it, maybe it is your palate, but I put it at about 2.3% to be exact. It very well could be. Who knows? I don't Let's know. hear Nick's scores. Uh, second, oh. actually, first we're gonna hear Redbeard scores. Redbeard. Red. 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 Yeah. Which one? And beer? Jamie. Like you said, I've had this a couple times now, and I feel like it's uh, it's just getting a little bit better as it kind of matures a little bit. Like I had it first in November, and it's now February, almost March. Fuck you, autofocus. What's mm. wrong with you? Terrible shit. Um, yeah, it's phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal beer. I've never had any other cognac, cognac, however it's properly pronounced, barrel aged beer. So as far as that goes, I'm going to give it a 10 because I think whatever it is they did to do that process was phenomenal and perfect and amazing. And I love it. And as far as my personal enjoyment, also a fucking 10. Wow. Thanks again for having me this evening. 
Cheers, gentlemen. Craft beer shill. Cheers, Redbeard. Also, I just <laughs> want to point out one thing about Redbeard is the fact that he said it in a pre-recorded video and the autofocus fucked up on him and he could be bothered to do another 30-second clip. Come on, yeah, exactly. Come on, Redbeard. All right, I'm so I... Redbeard. And I apologize. What you what did you give for your ratings, sir, uh, Greg? It was 10 out of 10 as well. Muted. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I, yeah. I thought... Greg and I, I was a little confused. No, it's a 10 on both. 10 for style. Um, 10, 10, 10 on both. All right, so let's go over to virtual Jamie. Now, I did mention this to Jamie. I only want to do one virtual presence uh, uh, per, uh, thing on uh, each ep any episode. I don't want this to become a pattern. <laughs> so this is the only time I'm actually going to air a second virtual clip. Only because it's a special beer and he had already pre-recorded one. We all love Jamie anyway. Well, hello. All right. Well, hello there. And as you can see, I'm enjoying some Bring Out Your Dead. Thanks to Greg Ballo. Got me this bottle. I actually have another one in the cellar. And uh, yeah, for once, uh, as usual, actually, uh, Greg is 100% right. Um, highly enjoyable. And uh, yeah, 9.5 all around that is what I'm going to give it. It's, you know, everyone's probably uh, gone off on uh, how good it is, but I'll just say it's whatever. It smells like <laughs> chocolate colored cherry type things and smells like heaven with a bucket of rainbows and uh, tastes like uh, the finest port uh, that uh, is actually beer. Um, better than Utopias. And cheers. Ten minutes later. The uh, guys are probably going long, so I'm just doing some quick uh, BYOD shooters. Um, so far, I'm uh, getting a 9.5 out of it. It's, uh, oh man, that is really good. It's uh, 9.5. So I thought while I'm doing that, I might as well also do uh, some Thomas Hardy's Ale. It's another 9.5 beer. God. Let's give a little shooter of that, too. Let's see how it goes. Oh, man, that... Oh, that's really good, too. I think that's going to be a 9.5 for both of those beers. And uh, while we're doing it, um, 9.5 Kubi. Let's try it out here. <laughs> you did. There's a time to start We're going to do a Kubi here, guys. Get some of that. Got a little oh, bit of this. Go on. Shake up. Let's see. That's a ten. That's a ten right there, boys. Shabam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, cla that's classic. Yeah. Jamie. Shabam. Oh, that's Jamie. Shabam. All right, that's amazing. Oh, man. that's amazing. Cause that's a Kobe. That's Kobe. Jesus. All right, so I'm gonna have a hard time following this shit up, considering I've drank most of the bottle now and I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, but I still have to give my opinion. Nobody, that, that even if nobody else wants to hear it. So I noticed in the aroma that I get as a uh, uh, bits of uh, chocolate syrup. I noticed the uh, this big raisin note that uh, now thanks Chris for putting a name to it. Um, I do get it. Kind of has that smell like a like a red wine. Uh, and actually, I think Jamie had mentioned port, so I think that that would be a good uh, a good. I, I have, I'm having a hard. I'm not really a wine drinker, so I'm having a hard time placing what type of wine that is i know it's not like a pinot noir it's not that dark uh or 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 uh it's a little bit more acidic than that uh but uh yeah like so a probably cabernet sauvignon yeah something uh, like something like a red whatever that was a little bit of shiraz who knows Maybe a little <laughs> bit of a merlot could be shiraz who knows uh, it's more it's more vinous than, than anyway uh, all right so uh i'm getting uh a taste of the this uh dark chocolate syrup red rich red wine something like liqueur chocolates like a like a like a rum chocolate uh like you know those little candies like like not necessarily like chocolate cherry covered things but just like uh like can like uh chocolate covered candies to have like a liqueur center rum basically liqueur center um i'm also getting a lot of coffee on it one of the biggest things i noticed about this is that it's it's it does come off as maybe a bit mild it drinks like it's a lighter beer uh and then it's not just 
that it's, it's like you don't taste the alcohol in it. It actually goes down really quite quite smooth for a better lack of better uh, term. Uh, I do find this distra- this drinks deceptively well. Like it was like a a six percent beer or something as compo- as compared to the eleven point four that it actually is. This is incredibly dangerous stuff. Um, it's warming in the finish, but it's not boozy. I'm not getting booze out of it. I do get a touch, like when you're talking about soy sauce, I'm not sure what, what that other kind of soy sauce you're talking about, but I do get maybe like a, like a touch briny in the finish, like an oyster stout, like a, not quite to the level of some oyster stouts where it's out downright salty, but just like this, this, this slightly salty, slightly vinous kind of, kind of taste you get in this finish. Along with some, like, as it warms up, I noticed that there's a lot more, like, cinnamon and raisins pop poking up in the finish as well, which really, really makes this thing, like, a very, very, very unique beer. Now, I think my only complaint about this is that I'm not much of a wine guy, so the cognac thing kind of uh, um, doesn't do it as much for me. I think I like this better than, like, Nickelbrook's Winey Bastard, but if you compare it to other um, Imperial Stouts, I think I lean towards, like, uh, Kentucky Bastard much more, or uh, um, several other Imperial Stouts I can't think of right now because I'm drunk. <laughs> um, yeah, but if I was going to put a st- score to it, I think overall for the style, I'm going to give it a 9. And for the overall enjoyment, I'm going to give this a 9.5, just because this is quite, quite, quite incredible uh, for a beer. This is really nice. And again, everybody's been blowing Greg tonight, but thanks, Greg. Keep blowing Speaking of someone who's blowing Greg, my wife would like to give a review if that's okay. You don't have to count her score, but she just is going to taste it and would like to give a quick review of what she thinks of it. All right. We kind of do care about Agnes's opinion there on here, even if Greg doesn't. Well, as you know, I don't really drink very sophisticated beers. She likes steam so that's her current favorite. Yep. Uh, we need to know uh, if Ashley Agnes exists. Can you turn the camera, please? Thank you. Okay, hold on. She's just fixing herself up a second. Give her a second. I have to Excellent. Put my... Excellent. I, I had my hair up. I couldn't hey. Up. Hey. So I will say I don't drink craft beer. Well, I mean, I'm drinking a steam whistle right now. That's craft. But I will say that I agree with what everybody has said especially i think recently nick is how drinkable it is like you don't taste the alcohol for an 11.5 is it um, 11.4 11.4 close that is dangerous it's very smooth um it's it's funny because greg and i always joke about is it offensive i find it's not offensive I would drink this. For a person who doesn't drink craft beer, I would drink this. So there you go. Bellwoods, throw that on your label. Not a fan. I would imagine she gives it a 10 out of 10 for both style and personal preference just to offset Ashley's bottom. If, sure. If, if you were rated, what would you rate it? Uh, okay, so... I know style, you probably you don't yeah, drink style, style because I don't drink this kind of style, but again, it's it's... I don't know what I, I'm not familiar with the kind of stuff. Well, normally. just give it, just give it a personal so I'm gonna, rating. I'm gonna say uh, an eight on the style, and what's the other one? Personal rating, how much you personal enjoy just in general. Um, I would drink this, so I'm probably gonna say a nine. There we go. Eight point five nine. Should I count her scores in the bit in the in the whole thing? Depends if it brings. Please, up. sure. Yeah, it, 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 it brings it, it would bring them down actually. Don't what? Count it. How's that possible? We'll count, it. we'll count it in our hearts, but not on the actual <laughs> score itself. Just in our hearts. I, well, Ashley, already, I, I Ashley already fucked this, so I'm sorry, Ashley. It's not your yeah, fault. Yeah, Ashley hey, totally I, did. I, I, I did Should've the preemptive, on. like, you may want to yeah. throw out my scores because it's not fair because my bottle, I think. No, it's fair because that's part you of the You always practice. throw Ashley's scores out and include hey. Agnes. Well, here's, no, here's the thing. It's no. always fair because it came from the same batch. And yeah. unless Ashley's fucking leaving it out in 90 degree weather when it's fucking two degrees outside, not happening. Um, he takes care of his beer so it can happen. And that's the part of craft beer is you can have off, off bottles, off batches. So I'd say include it. Well, yeah. And I, I agree. I'm the biggest fanboy of this beer there is, but you know what? 
Ashley paid the same $15 for this beer that everyone else did. And his might be from a different barrel than the rest of ours. It's totally possible. But the fact is Bellwood sold him this product through me, but whatever, they sold him this product. And this product should be as good as the rest of us. Now, like, like I said, I want to bring Ashley another bottle because I want him to try it again to see if it's, if it's actually his palate or if it's the bottle. I suspect it is the bottle. I don't suspect it's his palate because it seems so completely different than everyone else. But my feeling is his score should count the same as everyone else's because that's he purchased a product that costs the same amount and he should get enjoyment as the rest of us. I just want to mention one other thing too is that Ashley's not going to have to pay for a second bottle. Greg's going to bring this out of the kindness of his heart because that's the individual he is. I'll share and we will all we'll, uh, we'll all pour a little bit, enjoy it, and we'll see what we think of it. Also, I paid eleven dollars and seventy nine cents American, just to be clear. I love that idea, Greg, and I appreciate the uh, the offer. Thank you, sir. No, it's not an offer. I'm going to force it on you. <laughs> well, fine. Just don't hoop it up my ass, okay? Please. The, the best thing about uh, it is <laughs> Ashley doesn't have to drive this time, so it's it, he's just going to be having absolutely shit face and it's going to be glorious. So, can't wait. Yeah, until I, yeah, anyways. I should be like the bus driver. I should get a bus for the bottle share and just drive a little bit. I imagine a bus is expensive. And you know what? We've got a Tobacco Condos to buy. Yeah, I, I agree with Ignis. Jesus Christ. Tobacco right. Condos, but also all the Bring Out Your Dead. So, yeah, probably not the greatest investment. Probably about two more cases of Bring Out Your Dead, though. Oh, okay. Exactly. I've oh. done the, uh, actually, um, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to show the ratings, then we'll go to the comments. I'm sure there's tons now because we've been oh, talking wow. forever. Because uh, I already have the ratings done, and actually I did include Agnes's score because it didn't bring it down that much. We have oh, 9.06s all around. Is that the highest? What? Is that the highest ever? Like both over nine? I beat MGD? I, you know what? I'm not, I don't I know. think that yeah, shit on MGD. MGD. But I'm not, not sure if it beats Rochefort 10. Ooh, yeah, Rochefort yeah. Was pretty high too. I I suspect the Rochefort ten may have been higher in one and lower in the I, other. I think it was higher You're in right. style, but uh, lower in a personal opinion. I think this is the first time I want to say I've ever seen over nines for the overall personal opinion. And again, not to um, obviously uh, uh, Ashley's bottle is is weird, but if it if it wasn't for that, if everybody had the same bottle, this would be. Like, way up there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, way to fuck it up, uh, Ashley. Good job, buddy. Yeah, it's Ashley's bad bottle brought it down from, like, nine fives to... We were... Hey, man, that, that's, like, uh, some of the highest ratings I've ever seen. Maybe we had two people saying 10 out of 10. But I'm almost happy it did happen, because, like I said, when you talk about craft beer, there's inconsistencies, whether it's batches, whether it's bottles. That's the yeah. one thing. You can say what you want about Budweiser at the beginning, but, like, to find an off-bottle or can of Budweiser is probably pretty rare unless you're storing it in your trunk like you're Ethan. Other, <laughs> other than that, you know, it's, you know, you're, you're craft beer. You, it's a crapshoot sometimes. And, you know, Ashley paid the 15 bucks, and he didn't get his money's worth. Of course, Greg's going to make it right, because that's the type of guy Greg is. Good dude. But I'm it's good. shitty. Bucks. <laughs> so I want to say one thing is that Bring Out Your Dead showed up in Western New York here. We got distribution Bring Out Your Dead. They're on the shelves right now as I speak. Twenty dollars American a bottle. So wow. that's that's literally like twenty seven, twenty eight dollars Canadian. Wow. Yeah, it's was, almost double the price. No. This year was an absolute huge batch. Like they only sold out of them. Like they released them in October, and they still had some kicking around in December. So they made an absolute huge batch. So. It doesn't shock me that there could be some batch variation because they obviously used a lot of barrels. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, you want me to go to comments, Nick, so we can wrap this up? Yep. Uh, do you want me, uh, Joe, you want to read some of the comments? I mean, that that's why I asked, but yeah, yeah, I'll go, yeah, I'll go okay. read. Go Just for, read. I got a pee. Go, <laughs> Ashley, go pee. We already Ashley heard has the, the impact of the bottom, buddy. We're good. Anyway, um, we have Eric Gilbert says, as he likes to troll, I never heard of Bed uh, Bellwoods either. He's never heard of Bellwoods. He, that's his running joke is he doesn't know they exist, even though he lives not that far from them. Um, Ring Air Parade says, Joe, the Bam Burana is so fucking good. We just got Cigar City in Maine today. As you know, uh, Oscar Blues bought Cigar City, six ninety nine a four-pack for the Bam Burana. The 7.5% AIPA was nine ninety nine dollars for six-pack in the fridge. I think I heard that, but how long ago does that happen that Oscar Blues bought Cigar City? 
I don't know. And I said six nine nine in a four pack. Uh, it was sixteen nine nine. He actually put an exclamation mark for the one. So I don't know what he's doing, but it's raining on a parade. So I don't, no one cares. Um, Redbeard says, to be fair, I totally heard of Bellwoods and even had one of their beers before Greg sent me there. Just wasn't aware of how awesome they are. There's a thing called Google Maps. Use it next time, Redbeard. Eric Gilbert says, there is always one to kill the score. And Chris agrees with him because that's usually what happens. Um, Craig says, great anal lysis, Greg. Mostly professional. I'd agree. Eric Gilbert says, eat crow. Greg, Redbeard says, all the Greg love. Ring our parade says, one to try, bring out your dead. But after this, looks like no rush. Cheers to all the beer tubers. I see what he did there. Also, ring our parade, settled that. Uh, Chris says, hashtag unprofessional Redbeard. Correct. <laughs> Redbeard says, I redid the history clip three times, too much work, and it still sucked. Probably should have done it a fourth time. Uh, Ray Parade says, he hopes to see Hardy's Ale. I don't know if he means as a beer analysis one of one or in his area, but I'd imagine we're doing it on beer analysis one of one at some point. As long as I can get a bottle. But doesn't matter. If, yeah. if he can't get one, one of us will host it on channel. Fuck, fuck Nick sometimes. Yeah, I've got two of them. Beer analysis 201 on off the 10th. Two on one and off the top. Now we'll we'll see if we can make it happen. And by we, I mean mostly Greg. Probably Greg. Um, <laughs> Greg's been good about it because at least I pay him back. Yeah, I mean you pay for it and the shipping and everything. All Greg has to do is pick it up for you, which you know clearly he has seventeen well, LCD for packaging, packaging and then boxing it up. Oh, damn. All, all all I ask is that Nick buys me another eighteen hundred dollar jacket. Another one, holy uh, shit! No. Um, Chris confirms soon. Rain I parade. Uh, Eric Gilbert says Hardy finally hit the shelves in Ontario and in, I think in response to Rang Iron Parade. And then Rangar Parade randomly just says, Yo, Chris, because I guess he's happy talking to me in the comment section. Uh, Chris yeah. says <laughs> Chris says, thanks to Ash, this beer is not better than all the rest. Correct. Red Beer says, I freaking hate wine, but loved this. And then Lee responds with you love wine, spelled W H I N E, because yes. That is correct. Ray Parade says cognac is similar to brandy, I believe. Cognac is not a wine, I think. And then Lee says brandy comes from wine. Mm -hmm. It's wine in distilled, fo in distilled form. And then Ray Parade says Yoli learning something new. Cool. Yeah, con cognac is is brandy from the cognac region of France. Yes. And br brandy is yeah, just something like that, distilled wine. There's the there's the old saying that all all uh, cognac is brandy, but not all brandy. <laughs> hey. It's kind of like the bourbon and whiskey thing. I got you. Um, we have Rainer Parade says, Redbeard, don't mess with that mother effer. And then Redbeard says, Cognac barrels are lovely. Lee be wise. I think that was in response to, to Lee. Um, Ethan shows up, not knowing how beer analysis 101 works because he's Ethan. So, sup, guys? Could I get an invite? I'll see if my phone will let me join. Mm. The after show, perhaps, Ethan. But if you don't have Bring Out Your Dead, then that's a big hearty no, even though we love you. And then Lee confirms that Redbeard, being the classy individual that he is, says, the fuck is next weekend's beer? Um, not sure it's on a weekend. It's usually on a Wednesday, but good job. Oh, you said next weekend's beer? He, he literally said the fuck oh, yeah. is next yeah, weekend's okay. beer. Then, then move on to the next comment. Is he drunk at work? He might be. Probably is. What did, is there another comment? After that, just Ethan says, okay, that's fine. My phone is a bitch anyway, so I'll see if it works tonight 50-50. All right. Okay. And then Eric Gilbert says, "What's his ne what is next week's beer?" All right, Hello. so he asked it properly. So we're going to go with Sierra Nevada Pale Ale next week. That's unfortunate. I will not be here. I'm going to wash my hair. Anal wise. Go system. wash your hair. Fuck safe, Chris. Uh, and then he says, "Make like a serial killer and murder this life." Correct. And that's it. That's all we have for all the comments. Appreciate everybody commenting except for Redbeard, who should have been here, but he apparently doesn't know how to tell people about correct addresses. So that's on him. <laughs> Oh, oh. oh. Hang, on. Oh. hang on. To be fair, on the live hangout, it was half my fault because I fucked up something on the address and Redbeard gave me the wrong postal code. So between the two of us, we, we both fucked up and therefore it took us two and a half weeks to get a thing out to North Bay when yeah. Nick got his past two days. And yeah, you had. Yeah, so you have a Polish guy and a ginger. Did anyone think this was going to go smoothly? So we we fucked up, but I got to take at least fifty percent of the blame. We we are both fuck ups. We both don't know how to send beer mails. 
So because he's, he's a, not the I'm, Greg we need, he's the Greg we deserve. Oh, I do feel, and in some ways, it was beneficial because we got Joe this week. I don't know would we've gotten Joe last week. I don't no, know. you would have not have gotten me last week. So I think it's up to you to determine whether or not I'm an improvement on Redbeard. Um, that's for you guys to decide. I have you no idea. Beards. There's both beards, but Joe's is more. Mine's great. Right My, mine's like mine's like salt and pepper. Okay, mine's salt and pepper. Both beards, but no uniform. And I think you should dye your, your your beard there, Joe. I think you should yeah. just shut your mouth, Chris. Just I saying. second that. Agnes says, "I'll I'll, I'll consider because it it's Agnes, not you, Chris. <laughs> just just let let that be known." Thank you. All right, so we're about ready to wrap this up. I think we've read all the comments except for, of course, Redbeard saying his his uh, weekend was a typo. His hands are greasy. It's a likely excuse, but <laughs> an excuse nonetheless. All right, so I think um, we're going to wrap this up. Sierra Nevada is next week. want to thank uh, everybody for coming on, uh, everybody for watching this crap. Uh, especially thank Greg, because we've been uh, thanking him all night while he flexes his packs there on his chair. Right. We're going to thank Greg properly and say thank you, Greg, for being a hero tonight and, uh, and then sending us all these beers, even though we paid for them, and sending Ashley the spoiled one. Wait. And at the, at the festival, I may I give me hand jobs because that'll be the proper thing. What are you going to say, Chris? I was going to say uh, everyone should subscribe to Greg's channel on YouTube. He produces fantastic content. Oh. Um, he is he uh, one of the greatest beer tubers who ever lived. And without his generosity, I don't know what we'd be doing. Thank you. I so don't much, know Greg. If I'm one of the greatest. I'm. I would say I'm definitely the greatest. That was your. That was your cue to end it right there, Nick. All right. Well, actually, I wanted to end it on one thing because uh, Ashley just touched his penis. <laughs> <laughs>